Hello friends, this video on integrals part 38 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 37. Now let's study fundamental theorem of calculus. Till now what we have done, we have found the integration using limit of sum. That is if I have fx dx from a to b, I used to say this is nothing but b minus a limit of n tends to infinite 1 by n f of a f of a plus h blah 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 a very crude way to solve such questions and also it's very difficult also so what we will do is to make my life simple let me learn fundamental theorem of calculus fundamental theorem of calculus is based on area functions and there are two theorems actually first fundamental theorem and second fundamental theorem so we'll learn both of these the first, before we study the first fundamental theorem, let's study the area function. The area function says that if I have my sum function fx, this is my function fx, if I integrate this guy from a to x, let's suppose from a to some value x, where x is variable now, some value x, this guy is ax. This area is ax and this is denoted by integration of fx dx from a to x. Correct? Now, the first fundamental theorem calculus says that if I differentiate this guy area function that becomes fx that is I'll tell you what my ax is nothing but integration of fx dx from a to x. Now derivative of this that is a dash x right is nothing but d by dx of this guy. 0 to x or a to x fx dx and this is nothing but fx so if you see I'll show you if this is my function and let's suppose my function fx is like this correct this is my fx let me find integration of fx dx if you plot this guy fx dx, this guy is x, this guy is y. So if you plot fx dx with the same thing, now at this point, if you see, my area is uh, 0, it goes like this, the area is decreasing, it goes like this. This is the, my function fx dx curve. Correct, this is x and this is again y. Now, if I want to find d by dx of fx dx, so what I'll get is, I'll show you here. At this point, if you see, slope is now here, if you see, this is very high, so decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. At this point, slope is zero. Now, if you see, slope is decreasing, 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 decreasing. That's if you see this guy is nothing but d by dx of integration of fx and this is if you see is exactly same as this guy so this is nothing but fx so this is what my first theorem of integral calculus if you have fx you find fx dx integral fx dx right from some point a to x let's suppose a to x now if you differentiate this guy so what you get is the function itself these two are same correct so my derivative of integral is fx dx itself and this is my fundamental theorem of integral calculus and now let's see what is second fundamental theorem of integral calculus the second fundamental theorem says that fx dx from b to a is nothing but integral of this fx that is big fx from a to b that is f of b minus f of a that is if you want to find the value of this you first find the integral of this and let's suppose this is f of x right because f is nothing but antiderivative of small f big f is nothing but antiderivative of small f you find the antiderivative and then you say find fb and then you find fa and what you get is this guy we'll take some examples to uh, make this clear just understand that integral of fx dx from a to b is nothing but 
antiderivative b minus antiderivative a. Earlier we used to use the big formula here b minus a uh, limit n tends to infinite 1 by n f of a f of a plus h right till f of a plus n minus 1 h. So instead of such a big formula what I am doing is I am saying f of b minus f of a. You just have to find antiderivative that is capital F. And there is a note on this uh, area function, integral as area function. When I say fx dx from a to b, the function has to be defined in a to b. It has to be continuous also. If it is not defined and not continuous, then we should not use this. If you see in case of derivation of the same thing we have, the function has to be defined in continuous. Generally, derivative is possible at that point. In case of integration, the function has to be defined and continuous in that particular interval. Because when I am talking about in, uh, integration, I talk about interval. When I talk about differentiation, right, I talk about point. So when I say the function is differentiable at this point, that means the function has to be continuous at that point. When I say my function is in integral at that particular interval from A to B, I mean my function has to be continuous in this particular interval. Let's take some example. So we have to integrate this guy minus 1 to 1 x plus 1 dx. First let's find antiderivative. Antiderivative of this is nothing but x plus 1 dx. x becomes x square by 2. 1 becomes x. Right. Since I am finding antiderivative here, I will not take the constant part. This is my antiderivative. So my total value is nothing but f of 1 minus f of minus 1. I told you f of b minus f of a. So what is the value of f of 1? This guy. I will put x equal to 1. So 1 square by 2 plus 1 minus f of minus 1. Minus 1 square by 2. 2 is down. Plus minus 1. You saw this, this is nothing but 1 by 4 plus 1 minus 1 by 4 plus 1. This gets cancelled and this is 2. So 2 is my answer. Very simple. I just found f of x that is antiderivative of this guy and then I found f of 1, f of minus 1, subtracted this got my answer. Let's take one example. 4x cube minus 5x square plus 6x plus 9 dx integral we have to find. And this guy is nothing but f of 2 minus f of 1. To find these, let's find fx. That is antiderivative of this guy. 4x cube becomes 4 into x cube becomes x to the power 4 by 4 minus 5 x square becomes x cube by 3 plus 6 x becomes x square by 2 plus 9 9 becomes 9x this is my fx correct so what is the value of f of 2 x to the power 4 that is 2 to the power 4 minus 5 by 3 into 2 to the power 3 plus this becomes 3 x square 3 into 2 to the power 2 plus 9 into 2 this is my f of 2 minus f of 1 x to the power 4 1 to the power 4 minus 5 into 1 to the power 3 by 3 plus 3 x square 3 1 to the power 2 plus 9 into 1 correct so this guy if you solve this becomes 16 minus 8 5 40 40 by 3 Right, plus 4 into 3, 12, plus 18, minus 1, minus, it becomes 5 by 3, plus 3, plus 9. So if you solve this, I won't solve this for you, you get 64 by 3, that is the answer. So, here you don't have to apply much brain, we know how to find antiderivative, that was the tricky part actually because for that, you have to use a lot of tools, sometimes substitution, sometimes uh, trigonometric rules, sometimes uh, uh, what do you call product rule. There are so many rules we have. But now, since we know all those rules, we can very well find fx, that is the uh, antiderivative of this function. Once I have this fx, I will just use f of b minus f of a, in this case, f of 2 minus f of 1. Let's take one example. This is again a simple one sin 2x dx. 
So here also the value will be nothing but f of pi by 4 minus f of 0. So let's find f of x first. If we assign to x, this becomes minus cos 2x by 2. So f of pi by 4 will be minus cos 2 into pi by 4 by 2 minus of minus cos 0 by 2. Correct. So this is nothing but if you take minus 1 by 2 common, this becomes cos pi by 2 is 0 and cos 0 is 1. Correct. So this becomes 1 by 11. See, this becomes 0 and this is 1 by 2. So that's 1 by 2. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.